How's it going guys? Today is another, uh, or this is another video on Nodescapes, um, tutorial number two or three or something, I'm not too sure what order they're going to go up in yet, but it is a tutorial and it is for Nodescapes and this one is going to be about the image node and how you can use the image nodes to drive uh, displacement values on the geometry and also um, manipulate those image values to come up with something completely new. Um, so let's jump straight in. Uh, we're going to obviously make sure that Nodescape's installed, and we're going to go to the Nodescape's menu, add a new node, and call it Cool Image Thingy Ninth, uh, and just execute the base preset. We're going to set the subdivision values to 80 so that we can actually see things happening. And then we're going to go to Inputs, uh, Image, and drop that in. And we need to enable UVs so that the image file can do its thing. Um, I have downloaded the height map from this cool tool. It's called Tangram's GitHub.io. It's like a height map tool. And if you just type in height map tool on Google, it's the first one. Um, well, it was in my case. So we're going to pull up the one that we exported. And you just export them by clicking export. Um, and we're going to pull up the one that we exported, and it's mental. So we're going to add in a math multiply. My brain stopped working then. And set that to like 0 0.125 or something, um, so that we can see it's not as mental. Um, and we are now going to start manipulating this particular, these values. Um, so we're going to go into the uh, value mapping, and we're going to add a smooth step this should be fun um and set it to something mental who knows uh let's increase that value for a minute so we can see this effect in it now you can turn off the initiation handle and the finish handle uh, of any of these we can set up like elastic or something like that um uh, kind of like that's nuts that is crazy um Oh, shit, that's a negative color, so we can't. Yeah, okay, that kind of looks mad. Um, what does the... What if we set it to, like, bounce or something like that? Okay, that looks weird. We'll do that. Um, and then you can do something else. You can just, like, copy it over. And set this one to like exponential or whatever. And put another multiply in between the two of them. So we've got multiply, smooth step set to bounce. And then we've got multiply. And then a smooth step set to exponential. Um, and we're probably going to have to... Oh, another thing we'll need to do is uh, on the image node. Sorry, we're going to have to change this from repeat to clip to stop any artifact around the edges for now it is something we're aware of and we're looking to address it um, so i'm going to set that to back actually maybe yeah um because that looks cool when we do that looks pretty neat actually and then we're going to add a simulation on top of this and we're going to smooth it out once go back one yep and then what we can do then is have a look at how this works without being it without being it like too jaggedy and sharp and stuff. So kind of like this little thing that got going on here. It's kind of like a volcano, and then we've got the same thing going on up there, which is pretty neat. Um, and then I'm going to add in a simulation, and it's going to be uh, no, it's not. Maybe do the thermal erosion rather than that. Oh no, actually we will do smooth and then we'll do thermal erosion. And we're going to change that angle threshold to like, I don't know, 25 degrees. And then that to like 0.55. And then just change the iterations up once. And then do it again. Yeah. And then what we can do is, um, like maybe change that to six. Eight. 
No, okay, somewhere in between seven. Yeah, okay, that looks pretty neat. Uh, and we can see like before and then smooth step and then multiply and then another smooth step and then we smoothed it and then we added some thermal erosion and this brought it all down and now we're going to add a little bit of hydraulic erosion. Yeah. And we're going to change a couple of values on here. So some of the values um, change the output quite dramatically. Um, using bell curve gives the most accurate, uh, but it takes the longest. So I'm going to enable debug so we can see what's going on. Uh, and I'm not going to use the bell curve for now just because it does take a while and I want it, you know, and I have to cut the video up into bits for you guys so you can actually get an idea of what's going on. Uh, so the erosion speed and deposit speed and minimum sediment capacity are probably the ones that will give you the most eroded look. So we're going to change that to like 0.35 and that means that the minimum amount of sediment that's left is like 0.35 or 35% of the value. Um, and we're going to do erosion speed set that to one so we can determine its erosion quicker and the deposit speed set that to one because we want it to deposit quite a lot and the uh, maximum drop at lifetime maybe like a hundred so that the droplets last longer uh, and we're going to try and like put this up to like 3500 or something like that so we've got more droplets affecting the mesh um, and that will take a little moment or two. How long did it take to process this? Like eight seconds from there. 13 seconds. Okay. Um, so we can see that we've got quite a lot that's happened here now. Um, and what we can do is you can kind of like mix these values before and after. Um, so if we wanted to, we can go and add a math node in. Unlike any math node, it doesn't matter for now. Um, and put in it pre smooth step into like here or something. Um, and set that to like subtract. Uh, oh. And then you can adjust the factor. So like the pre and then after. And then we can adjust it so that the like erosion values are higher without it re like read re really not without it needing to re-simulate it all um, so you can just make them a bit more prominent which is pretty neat um and then what i'll do is i'll set this to like a low value just something like that and then we're going to work on something separate now um so we want to do something with some noise so we're just going to add in a I don't know. Uh, Voronoi, where is Voronoi? Why have I lost it? There we go. Um, and plug that into the value and just snap over to Voronoi. And then we are going to do, let's have a look at the offsets. Uh, seed values, noise scale. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Uh, yep, yeah, so that's what I'm after. And then we're just going to like, Shift D to duplicate this node, this multiply node, uh, and set the values of that to like this or whatever. Um, and then we're going to do like a little bit of thermal erosion on this to break it up. Um, and then we'll add another noise, plug that into that, swap over to this, and we're going to go for. Oh, no, we're going to go for a hetero terrain this time around we we'll go for perlin we we'll go for this need to plug a multiply in so we can see what we're working with there we go uh, so when the hetero terrain and voronoi f4 and we're going to change the intensity to like 0.85 to make it a little bit you know crazy uh, and change the scale up a little bit so that it's like less mental um and then i'm going to add in a in the value mapping add in a edge fade onto that so we can 
see this uh, and then do a multiply after it so that we're just multiplying the values inside of the fade um, you can do it here too but it's like free edge fade uh, so ease it out and offset it a touch one direction and another direction and just increase the radius yeah okay um what would we like to set it to x and then just put like a crazy big ridge in the middle nah i don't like that okay yeah let's put it somewhere over here uh, increase the radius a touch so we've got that and then we're going to do the same and add a bit of thermal erosion to this to break it down so it's not as spiky and then we're going to just uh, mix the two of these so we're just going to use a, a math node again uh, math 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 and just use math because i want to work out how much we want to mix this uh, so we're using add uh, so i want to you know what i do want to add all of it yeah whatever i want to add all of it together uh, and then we're going to do the same uh change this to add plug that into the top one plug that into the bottom one and maybe no the other way around yeah we're going to do it the other way around yep okay and that's it essentially um maybe drop that in the i uh, don't know change the seed on that get this one up here to erode a bit that we just created and it did some so let's go back and increase the resolution because 80 is not a good not good to like view it all so while that's loading it's gonna like let it load um essentially what we've done here is something that you can't find um in any other kind of um like terrain tool for blender um you would get it or similar like variants of it in you know these paid um big boy terrain tools um gaia world creator things like that but this is something that's not formally been visible inside a blender um and i think maybe what we need to do actually is come back here and just view that while it's in the high resolution okay that seems fine and just view this when it's in the high resolution because we had some like spikes yeah them spikes there don't like them spikes so that'd be them ones so we're bringing that down a bit i think yeah okay um, and then just go back to the final one and just click like execute so it just reloads everything anyway uh so yeah this is not really something that you'd find in blender in any of the other terrain tools that you get in blender um it's just not been possible with the user interface i say user interface like nodescapes is a user interface we're not giving you like a script editor um but your conventional user interface system where you've got like the end panel and then stuff going on in there um, and sliders and values and all that kind of stuff. This is not something that you'd usually get or you can't actually get um, because they use like a single noise pattern and then you just get to change the uh, scale of that value and the height of that value. Um, but you don't have the option to mix noise patterns. So using something like uh the built-in tool for blender like ant or something like this you wouldn't get that um and i don't want to be like you know mentioning other creators uh tools because that's just not i don't think that's right the right thing to do but i will say that um the material based ones even though you can mix all of these kind of things you, you don't have the actual geometry um so you're reliant on like 
a lot of RAM usage being used up for textures and things like that. Um, I know there is one out there that uses a couple of different displacement maps and then you can mix them together uh, in the shader viewport, in the shader editor, and then you're messing around with all kinds of shader values and things like that. All of that chews up like resources. Um, and from this point, of, we're only using like 216 megabytes of RAM, is that? Let me just double check. Yeah, it's 216 megabytes of RAM and 2 gigabytes of video RAM. And the video RAM is just because that's what this Blender is using. Um, we've got a low face count here. And you can always increase the face count. <sighs> Send the computer to the moon now. Um, yeah, so like this is just not something that you could get in conventional methods previously. Um but you either had the option to choose a noise value, like a singular noise value, or you had the option to choose a height map value, and that was about it. Um, the tool that we're providing here allows you to mix the height map with a noise and another noise, and then use some kind of erosion, and then use some kind of smoothing, and things like that. Um, so it's all very modular. Um, it's a very modular system, which allows you to just do whatever you want, essentially. Um, the possibilities are limitless so and we are only just scratching the surface here um, I'm just trying to fill some time while this does all of its calculations um, one thing I will say while this is doing its calculations is that it's, it's all CPU based and it's single threaded at the moment so ideally you want something like with a 3 gigahertz clock speed or above um, to get decent performance out of it um so whatever cpu you've got um it's all single core clock speeds so there's no one going to be bragging with thread rippers in the comments and things saying that they're ruining this in seconds it's not possible at the minute but we are implementing or looking to implement like some new uh coding languages which will allow for a uh, multi-threaded performance and then further down in the, the the pipeline we're looking at gpu compute for this kind of thing so i guess watch this space um and if you've got this what i'll do is i'll save this preset out um and just tidy it all off so that you know what's going on um and then just drop the the preset into the video description and you'll be able to just download it straight from the Google Drive. It's only like two or three kilobytes or something like that. Um, so then you can just install the preset by going to this little drop down and go import presets and then pick the zip file and it'll just import it. Um, one thing I will do is I will detach this image node um, for now. And I'll just like put it out here somewhere. Um, and I'll make sure that the resolution is like 80 or something like that. Um, because you'll need to Im you'll need to put this image back in and then plug it over um or the preset just won't load i thought it looks pretty cool as it is um that looks a little bit oceany maybe there's something we can do with oceans um so yeah that's that one guys and we went into the 18 minute mark and it was five minutes of me rambling and i am sorry for that um but it's been a long couple of days so on that note i'm gonna let you all go um and let you or give me a thumbs up, because you know you want to. And a thumbs down if you just want to watch the world burn. Uh, subscribe to me if you can. Uh, and well, you, Everyone can. Subscribe to me if you want to. If you want constant updates, because you'll get notifications when I release videos and things like that. So, um, that'll be there. And I'll drop a link to the Discord channel. And I'll drop a link to the Trello board, so that you guys can see the progress that we're doing. What we're working on, where the steps are, and blah, blah, blah. Um... I think that's probably it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Right. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace.